The sky above the port was the color of television turned to a dead channel. Today I would like to talk about Neuromancer by William Gibson. The story starts off in Chiba, Japan, and is following this guy named Case. And he's this former super hacker, but he betrayed some of his former business partners. And as a result, they poisoned him with his neurotoxin. And so poisoning prevents him basically from accessing the matrix or the internet. So he can't be a hacker anymore. And so now he is this like kind of low level criminal hustler to make ends meet. He's kind of living in poverty. Uh, it kind of talks about how like this Chiba area is like not a nice place to live. He's in some place and he hears from his, uh, his ex-girlfriend. She tells him that this guy, his former boss, is looking for him and he wants to kill him. Makes Chase feeling a little bit depressed. And so he's like feeling like maybe he should give up. And he's about to give up. And then this, this girl named Molly saves him. And Molly is a cyborg. She's really strong and she kind of like gives him a little bit of hope to keep on going. And she, she tells him that she can help him out. So Molly introduces Case to her boss and his name is Armitage. Tells, he tells Case that he can fix him so that he can access the Matrix. He also talks about how Case's body is kind of being broken down by all the drugs and alcohol that he's consuming. And so he can fix that as well. Case not really knowing what he's getting himself into accepts the offer and uh, takes takes the surgery and he wakes up again and he's like all like impressed that he can do all these things that he <laughs> couldn't do anymore uh, but he's also told that he's been there's been poison implanted into his body and that if he doesn't do what armitage tells him to then the poison will be released and then he will lose access to the matrix again and probably he'll die uh, so cases and molly's first job is to save or like kind of steal this ai construct from this place called SensiNet, and the and it's of this uh, former hacker called Dixie. And basically, it's like he died, um, but there's like kind of like a construct of his personality or his consciousness exists on this computer, and so they have to have to sort of retrieve this thing from inside this building, uh, in case it hacks the system, whereas some other people actually go in and get the the construct. Through this process, uh, Molly and Case discover that Armitage is actually this guy named Corto, uh, and Corto was this colonel for a black ops operation that went bad and everyone died except him and there's kind of like this weird like history where he kind of just vanishes kind of unsure because he's not who he says he is after the mission he was just kind of reconstructed um like in, at least his mind was like reconstructed and he became this new person but since he became this new person he's been having lots of mental health issues and he's become violent the next mission for the team is to travel to turkey and they have to they have to retrieve this guy named riviera and he is also kind of a cyborg because he has the ability or he has like these sort of technical enhancements that enable him to create these sort of holograms or holographic images that other people can see. And so he can like put on these shows of these uh, these images and that aren't real. At about the same time, uh, Case and Molly discover that there's this, this AI or there's this thing called Wintermute. Uh, and it's actually the product of this ultra wealthy family that lives in this like space colony. And that this family that lives on the space station, they're all clones of clones. And uh, the place where they live is this place called Villa Straylight, which is basically like a Las Vegas, but in space. And uh, through all this sort of investigation and discovery, they did realize that Armitage is actually not like leading this. He's just actually a tool of Wintermute and he's just being used. Like his violent reactions and stuff might be him sort of trying to resist this control that is being pushed on him or asserted on him by the AI. At Straylight, Case is doing his hacking. Uh, Riviera is uh, doing his is trying to extract a password from from uh, one of the clones. He's also addicted to drugs, and so this is, is important. Through this sort of chaos, uh, Case almost gets arrested, uh, but Wintermute is able to save him or like uh, allow him to escape, and so he runs off. Uh, when uh, Case gets back, uh, he finds out that Armitage is kind of going crazy, and he ends up getting ejected into space. Uh, and killed off because he's he's no longer cooperating with the winter mute and we also learn that Riviera has changed sides and so he's no longer on Case's team he's actually sort of siding with the clones and trying to uh, hurt Molly. Uh, Molly is inside the villa and she's kind of walking through it's really complicated it's like a maze and she's trying to find a specific door to be opened by at a specific time by a specific person. Case is also kind of pulled into this like sort of internet matrix dream where he's on this beach and he's with his ex lover and they're sort of living together and he's kind of feeling happy but it's it's all an illusion and he kind of realizes this uh but he also realizes or discovers that it's uh that's the other ai that's trying to lock him into those dreams uh, and so he's kind of like challenging it. and neuromancer is the 
um, AI that is kind of trying to lock him into these dreams and kill him. Uh, but there's this other guy who's outside and he sees that Case is um, dying potentially. And so he gives him all these drugs to wake him up. And so Case wakes up and is able to get out of the matrix. So Case and this other guy go in to the villa and they are going to try and save Molly. Uh, we find out that the drugs that Riviera has been taking all along are actually poisoned. And so he dies by poisoning. Case hacks into the system and he's helped by Dixie the AI or the construct AI from earlier on. Uh, also the, the clone, uh, she ends up deciding to help them or allow them do what they're trying to do. Uh, and so the AIs are able to merge, even though Neuromancer doesn't want to join. As a result of their sort of willingness to participate in the project, um, Case, um, the poison is removed from Case, he gets all this money, Molly gets money as well, but then she disappears. Uh, because Case has been abusing drugs and alcohol all this time, he needs to use some of his money to fix, fix his body because it's breaking down. Uh, he also becomes a super hacker again. Uh, Dixie the Construct uh, wants to sort of die and be put offline because he doesn't like being uh, existing in there. So that's, that's his reward for participating in the mission. We then learn that Case and his ex-girlfriend are living kind of as constructs in the matrix somewhere and they're happy together. Uh, we also learn that there are other AIs and that this like super AI that was created uh, as, a, as a plot of the story is actually trying to uh, join some other AIs as well and become even stronger. So, so here are my thoughts about this book. When I was younger, I really enjoyed this book, probably because it was like one of the first sort of science fictions that I got into. And, I, and so I really enjoyed it. Now that I've read a lot more science fiction, I don't find it as good. It's not, it's a good, like it's a good book and stuff, but it's a little bit boring and slow. And so there's other books that probably I'd find more enjoyment in reading. One thing though, that I do remember, like since the first time I read it is that at one point in the story, when they're at Villa Straylight, uh, they're at this restaurant and Case is all like tripped out on drugs and he's not hungry, uh, but Molly is and she's eating this meat or the steak and she's like, you should eat this. This is like real meat. Um, you know, you can't get real meat anywhere else or something. And so it's kind of like an interesting idea because like we're kind of getting pushed in that way right now uh, where like, you know, artificial meat is like all the thing that we eat and, and like it's more like real meat is getting more and more expensive and easy, and more difficult to get all like get a hold of and stuff. So it's just an interesting idea that this was something that was suggested way back then and now it's kind of, there's some truth to it today. Uh, there's a lots of people who are addicted to drugs in this book. Like it's all drugs basically. Uh, and, and it's, you know, it's like, people are motivated by the drugs and their their drugs are able to get them to do things that they wouldn't do otherwise uh, and i guess that's kind of like the nature of addiction and so that's kind of an interesting sort of theme or sort of undercurrent of the story that sticks with it um one kind of interesting idea too is the thought or the possibility that ai or technology could take over uh, and that even if we try to sort of prevent some technologies from doing certain things, they might decide or the technology itself might decide to do or go against our wills. And so like, there's always that risk, that underlying risk about the possibility of technology um, actually introducing more problems than it solves. This is like a reasonably old book. It was written like... If the internet existed, it was very early stages. Uh, and it's called The Matrix, so it's not exactly the same. But it's almost like where the internet is going towards, right? Like we have like these immersive sort of metaverses on the internet where people use virtual reality or whatever to interact on the internet. And so like, that's kind of a lot about what's going on with the story. Um, and maybe the technology in the story is a little bit advanced, but it does certainly seem like we're heading in that direction. And, you know, the, there's the space colony where a lot of the story takes place and we don't have that yet. Uh, but, you know, maybe someday. Another interesting theme in the story, too, is just the deception or dishonesty and people not being who they say they are, not being honest about themselves, like being different than who they are, or saying they're different people. Even like Molly is like never really reveals who she is. She's just kind of like this character who plays this role, but like she doesn't want anyone to know who she is. And so I think that's an interesting theme that's kind of persistent or consistent amongst all the characters in the story. Those are my thoughts on Neuromancer by William Gibson. Let me know what you think about this book in the comments below. If you like this video or you found it informative, click that like button. If you're curious about my thoughts on other books, click that subscribe button because I'll be making more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll talk next time. Goodbye.